Hi, it's Sam Tolbert, Sound of Joy Music Services. I trust everyone is having a good day, good afternoon, or good evening at the time that you are viewing this uh, video recording. We are continuing with our series we started in July for the summer, 10 Things Church Pianists Should Practice. Now we're up to number five. Uh, if you had, uh, look into the, um, into the uh, July videos, you will see where we covered, where we stopped off with number four, imp improvisation. Uh, between that time and now, though, we were able to get a, uh, get a hold of some new software, which I'm having a tremendous fun job learning, and that you have heard me uh, feature on this channel uh, called Synth Synthesizer V Studio Pro which allows me to create uh, simulated vocalist singers for any key uh, just by using MIDI files. And we're going to use one of those files in today's lesson, which we're going to cover. Just take a brief to that page. Playing by ear. Train your ear to recognize chords, intervals, and melodies. This helps to accompany singers, which is what we're going to cover today, and other musicians spontaneously. So that is going to be what we're going to cover today. As always, we'd like to always make you aware of the fact that you can help this channel out by number one, subscribing to this channel. If you're not subscribed, give us, giving us that thumbs up like so that the YouTube algorithm will get this out to more uh, music enthusiasts, not only those that love to listen, but those who love to learn to play. And of course, leave a comment and hit that notification bell. I'm working on the video to get those in, into the stream. Well, enough of me talking. Let's get into the, what I like to call piano warm up. Uh, the only way to get your ears attuned to hearing notes, um, if you're not an actual sheet music reader, for those who like to say play by, I say play by hear, not play by ear you play by hearing it but you need to know what those tones sound like so let's go to this page where we take away the Cordy app virtual keyboard and we put you where most musicians start off their day they're not looking at a computer but they're looking at the physical keys are in front of them now I always stress that musicians should practice in the piano mode minus all of those pads and strings because that just um, confuses your ear to what you want to hear. Do you have to start in middle C to start your practice? I like starting in, a, in an actual low spot just so I can hear the lowest part and then walk my way up. So as you see, I'm starting in A flat and go up more than one octave. Now I could go all the way up here if I want to and then bring it back down. And it doesn't have to be fast, it can be slow, because again, you're tuning your ears. Okay, that's where I started. And then I love doing chromatically up. This includes every note that you might possibly hear from a singer or from any particular song you're learning. And again, you don't have to rush it. This is about tuning and getting muscle memory in place. Let's stop at the A flat and then go back down, of course. And we'll slow it down so I can hear every potential note. Get it all warmed up, and we'll stop at the A-flat right here. So we'll stop right there. Again, your ears need to be properly tuned, which is why I Mm, oh, you had heard preach against the transpose button. I don't advise the transpose button. Maybe in a pinch if you're in a service and a, and a soloist pops up and they're playing in, I will even, will even practice that, they're playing in a key that you are not familiar with because you haven't practiced in it. Then spur the moment, you don't want to ruin the service by fumbling through trying to find a key. If you need to, it's, it's just like anything else, it's an actual tool for the musician. But don't make it a habit. Your habits should be practicing uh, a process, which is what I instruct on this site. What is my process? You hear me in every video. We learn what key the song is in, and then we learn the scale it's in, be it a major scale or a minor scale. 
If it's a minor scale, we should be able to hear that difference. And as I've always will uh, will keep uh, harping on, the major scale is your template. Any chord or note that is out of the major scale is when you'll be able to hear the different changes. But when you're tuned to what the major scale sounds like and another note with, with out, inside or outside of the scale, and by inside, sharp or flat, you'll hear that note and you'll find it a lot more quicker. What am I mean by sharp or flat? It's the one, the two. If I go to the three and go flat, flat a third of any key is a minor. If I sharp that sharp note, now we'll take it into a diminished range. There we go, into a diminished range. We're we'll also flat a third. And this is what you, we, we when, it, when it said you should be, let's go back to that page. When it says that you should be able to recognize chords, you should be able to recognize a major chord, a minor chord. A diminished chord because in your music that's what you're going to be hearing you're going to be hearing those chords being um, sub uh, included around a um, a singer let's see a major six a minor six um, let's see what other chord a flat seventh chord there we go we'll take that off I've got the chordy app set to the key of C. That's why you're not seeing that. But that would give you the actual, the actual flat, flat, um, flat seventh sound, which is the jazz sound, or using gospel. The I think we covered the minor six, right? You hear that in your preacher chords, major, minor six, your diminished chord. Now that your real contemporary jazz chord will take you here, and this chord is in the family of the minor and the bebop scale but it gives you that that um, jazz turnaround or that tritone sound I like adding this note to give it that touch and then right there but are these chords necessary to be used in every song no we're going to go to the key of G because a part of what a pianist player, piano player should be able to do is to play behind a soloist. Now we've used our uh, our virtual singer. I've got to give them a title. I think I gave them the Sound of Joy Virtual Singer A or Sam AI Singer Group. We're going to use um, Solaria. That is the vocal that you have heard me feature on this channel, and we're going to do the song "Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior." It's in the key of G. We're going to demonstrate how you can play this song in several keys, and we're going to use our solo, our virtual solo singer, to take us through that range and perhaps bring in our tenor also. So first of all, let's, if you're in the church and a soloist is, is called up, every musician starts to tremble. Even I trembled. I wanted to hear them talk so I can get a picture of where they're going to be singing or if they would announce what song they're singing, I could at least in my mind run through what the song sounds like. So if the, let's say the, the singer, singer, young lady comes up to the mic and announces that the, she is going to sing, since we're using a female voice, pass me not, O gentle savior. Now already I like, okay, I know that song, but what key would she be starting in? A, a soprano singer, and I gotta, there is a, a, a scale or a, a chart which I saw I've got, I've got to find that and put it on the site of the range of your singers usually I developed my own uh, after playing many years for, for singers that's come out of the blue most of your good tenors will be in the range of B flat to if depending upon the song to E flat your alto is going to be in the range of C to E flat your sopranos are going to be in the range of C, depending upon the song, to as high as F. Very rare will they go into G, unless it is a very uh, commonly known hymnal song. But we're going to show you, going to demonstrate that. So our soloists has come in, and they're going to sing, and they start singing. Pass me not, O 
gentle day. So now you're sitting at the piano, and a, and a lot of you guys are doing this. So if you're that musician, <laughs> if you're that musician that when someone starts to sing, you're fumbling to find where they are, what you want to be able to do is practice chromatic scales. In that range. You don't want to go any higher than here because your song soloist is going to start their song in this range and get fluid at being able to move so that if you have to be one of those musicians who is searching for the melody line it'll take you seconds versus half uh, 30 seconds trying to find where the note is now of course if you're un if you're unfamiliar with the song you let the person keep singing you give them eye contact to let them know if you can do it in acapella I'll, I'll catch up to you but don't be that musician that is that is um, let me just put that back. That is searching for whatever key they're in. When they start Pass singing, then you're like, um, me not, oh gentle day. Don't let that be you. Found it right. Now I know where it's called. Now I know to find. Now I know. Now I know cry. one, four, five, one, Why four. The one to the six to the two to the five me by. oh that is so great to have that feature now to feature on this channel so as you see a hymn is one of the easiest songs that you could ever learn because it doesn't require you to have passing tones and to have uh, runs and to have Pro, uh, to have jazz progressions lined up. Yes, you can add them later on, but technically what you want to be able to do is to support what the vocalist is doing. So we've, we found our vocalist in the key of F, but what if our vocalist comes in, let me just select this, and says, I'm having, uh, uh, can you lower the key for me because I have a, I have a cold. And then they turn to you and they say, well, just follow me. In that case, you let them start, but you use the same process to find them. Pass me. No, that's not supposed to happen. Let's, we're doing a whole shift here. Try it again. Pass me not, oh gentle Oh no, they in E. Scale. Now you know the one and you know where your chords are. Four, five, one. You know it's gonna go to the four. You know it's going to the one. You go to the six. To the two. To the five. Stay in the five. To the one. The process which is what I, which is what I preach. And I'll say this is what I do preach. When you've gotten yourself familiar with the scaled sounds and you do find that scale because you've practiced in it, but you may not be able to do the melody. There we go. <laughs> yeah. You may not be able to do the melody, but then you could find the chords that will support a singer. That's, these are the things that you practice. And yes, we're going to be having this uh, for our Patreon members. We'll be sharing a lot of uh, audio files in different keys of the very same song to help build. And we'll, we'll pick the off, we'll pick E and A and, and D, those keys that you don't normally play in. But I also want to try to keep it where the key that it may, a song is normally uh, put in for you to practice those chords. So let's go back to our soloist who's now in the key of E major and we're going to let her sing all the way through in E major and we're going to play the generic chords. Here she goes Pass and we like oh, not, oh, four, one, to the six, to the five, 
to the six, to the seven, to the one. Now we're gonna add more chords. We're gonna add more chords. The one, five, four, four, the one, passing to the six, three, four. Now we're comfortable. Keep on saying five to the one. Stay with a three over the one. To the four. Two. The one. Six. Two. To the five. Walk it up. One. Three. Four. One to the six, to the two, walk it up, five, one. Thank you, Solaria. This is what technology makes it possible for me to do, to give a more in-depth look at piano instruction. Now, I'm calling out the number system for those who are familiar with the number system. You should know one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one. For those who are the number system uh, users, once you know the placement of chords in a melody and, and you got someone singing the melody that you don't have to play, now you can just chord and let them have a, a landing spot. If I was going to do melody, pass me, not, not, oh, then to say, yeah, because I know the melody. Hear my humble cry. In my practice time, I can do that passing tone while on others thou art calling. All the scales. Not pass me by. So once you've learned the how melodies are placed within a particular scale, you build your chords off of that. So now when someone is singing, you won't need to play melody. So we're going to stay in the key of E because I want to challenge musicians. We're going to slow her down because we can change the speed without messing up the the vocal. We're going to put her at. Uh, this is for chord building. We're going to put her at 40 beats per minute. So we got, we have space to add chords. Now, what am I saying by adding chords? Extension chords. We're going to be, this, you heard me do this chord. Passing tones. Play the wrong note, that's the wrong note. Scale. Staying within the scale. So we slowed it down so you can see how all of those chords can now be added in. Now we know she's going to be in E, so we got ourselves prepared because we practiced. Pass me not, oh gentle. Rushing. Me Diminished chord. Savior. Savior. Da -da. Savior. Diminished chord. Hear my.
the color I want. That's the change I wanted. So now you can see where changing the tempo gives you now uh, a, a, a guide path to be able to Okay, it did stop. A, a guide path to be able to add more chords. Now we're in E major, and you see now as I got more comfortable knowing, okay, this is the changes I would have done in the key of F, but I'm now in the key of E, improvising. That's what the imp that that is part of what we said pr to that you should practice, and having an actual soloist singing the melody, so I don't have to l guide the the soloist with a, with a melody. I'm now free to experiment with chords, and by experiment. Mm -hmm. Looking at all the notes that's in the scale and all the notes that are not in the scale. Because I know it's going to go to the minor, but again, these are, these are the trips, tricks for playing in, 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 um, in the key of E. If you know your chords in C sharp, D flat, and in A flat, that's where your passing tones will come to get you from the one to the six. One, uh, E flat to the A flat. With the diminished chord to the six. And now in C sharp, the diminished chord to the A. A, right? F minor over A. Okay, we're not in the we're not in the E scale, but this is A. But when you are unfamiliar of what those passing chords are, passing chords are chords that lead you to the chords you want to get to. Again, if I want to get to the to the four, quick way, all the four to the four. Let's see. Uh, let me see. Hmm. I'm trying to find a quicker way up. There it is. what I was trying to hear uh, and when you have a a synthetic vocalist that's that sings in pure notes you can hear those changes Minor, major seven. Yes, fix it. got the tools to work with and that's what sound of joy is partially all about on the internet not only production but giving musicians who want to 
uh, improve on where they currently reside musically the tools necessary to be able to do that. Now we have a chord building series already on the channel. All those chords you see me playing in the key of E major are in that series, not only E major, but all the keys. We give you uh, the walkthrough, where they come from, how they're being placed, the different songs that they are placed in. We're going to change our soloist to a tenor and we're going to put our tenor in, he's in E, we're going to put our tenor in D. Let me just make sure I got this correct. So now we have a male voice, we're going to put our tenor in D, but we want to again show you the, the ability to be able to, just from practicing the different scales, the chromatic scales, and just and again, practice with a purpose. Now you see me fumbling around because I've done that a lot to be able to get warmed up. I'll, I'll, I'll do this. Just so I can hear it in my head. I'll do that just as to tune my ear. So if I want to play in the key of C, I'll find it without even looking for it. If I hear it in my head, I'll know where it is. If I want to play in C sharp, D, E, E flat, E, F, G, I can't, F, G flat, G, I'm not a singer. A flat, A, B flat, B, C, C, C. I can't sing, and you can find that out. But I can hear the audible tones that when I'm learning a song, I'll hum it. I'll go, wait, what, 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 where are they? Okay, I know where I can, I know where I can find it at. But let's find out. I'll find the note. But let's bring our tenor in now, and we've changed the key. I called it out, and I shouldn't have. But let's see if we can find our tenor because we've been practicing. Me not all gentle savior. Oh, D major. Hear How do we play for him? Find the basic chords first. The bass chords one, three, four. The one. Walk it down to the six, to the four, the five. That's Hayden, my virtual tenor, tremendous singer, good, solid uh, strength behind those tenor notes. But now you're hearing the, the, the process that I, I teach. If you practice major scales, minor scales, and chromatic scales, we'll, we'll call it like that, just those three, primarily when you sit down, you want to be able to register within your ears where are those notes when you look at the keyboard. That's why a transpose button, if it's even one tune out, you, you will have, a, you will, when you sit down to one that is in tune, you automatically go to the wrong note. So yes, in a punch, in a pinch rather, if you need a transpose button, then yes, reach for it. If a singer comes in, um, I'm not even gonna touch mine, but um, if a singer came in and, you, and you're used to playing in E flat and he's now down in D, and so you don't mess up the service, I'll put it like that. In a practice thing, then you're gonna, you're gonna practice in D, but during the service, if someone comes in and they start singing a song like that and you're like, oh, okay, you know, God forgive me, musicians forgive me, Nobody's going to see you touch that but, but yourself unless, you, of course, you don't put it back. But then you want to be able to be, be comfortable. Let's finish this out, and then we'll go on to the close out this session. Savior. We're slow. Savior. You're finding your nose. One, six, two, major. To the five, and you can walk it up as you get comfortable. The three, 
four. You know it's going down to the six. Get comfortable to the four. Two. Five. one more time and we're going to speed you up to a more comparable tempo I believe 50 was where we had everything set to so now we, we, we we've actually sped it up and when you practice the same progressions you do in another key in my chord builder series I gave you that walk up in every key so that you could practice that So that you can be comfortable no matter what key it's in. So we now we've increased the speed so that we can now give it a little more tempo to it. Pass me not all gentle Savior. Diminish walk up. Turn. As you become more proficient, and by proficient, which means practicing with a purpose, no song that you're familiar with will be beyond your creativity, improving upon it, because you will have a good understanding of where that song is going and how musically, from a chord standpoint, you want to get there. Sam Tobit, Sound of Joy Music Services. Let's just change our page here. Got all these, I need buttons here. Sam Tober, Sound of Joy Music Services. If you're enjoying this, this, this series, please leave, put it in the comments. If you think there's something I could add to this series that will help you, um, just wanna pull up what's coming up next. The next thing coming up in the series is number seven, rhythm and timing, where we use a metronome to practice maintaining steady rhythm and timing. This is crucial for leading congregational singing and playing with other musicians. So now you see what I have to create now using my uh, AI software and my AI singers, I've got to create a congregational song. Let me see, do I have a, a congregational song already? Let me just pull it up because I've been creating a lot, a lot of things here. Let's see if I've created one that's congregational. Um, hmm, hmm, not congregational. Not congregational. No, I have nothing congregational. I do have something tenor-wise. It's kind of congregational. Call and response. So let's pull up my tenors, call and response. And we'll, and we'll leave you with, with that. Now, this, I, this one was created because I, I wanted to be able to investigate. Can I get a good quartet sound um, out of this? And what I want to be able to do is to loop this so I can show you how you can create chording around. Is it already set up for me to do that, to loop it? Give me a second here. got it 
it's set to loop and I can't find uh, where is my There you are. No. Nope. This is imprompt. I'm searching for the I want to loop it. I'm looking for the arrows to be able to do that. And um, they are not popping up for some reason. Although it does show it's there, it's not showing up on my... Alright, give me a second to do this. Let's restart the software. It's not showing my, my loop points. So I can do this. Let's try this again. And there they are. Okay, software is not perfect, but we work with what we have. Trouble in my way. We're going to use this as a as a as a closing out. It's kind of congregational. Um, and I'm going to speed it up so that it is a little bit faster than the tempo I did it in. We'll make it congregational. Not too fast. Trouble in my way. Key of B flat. Now, I haven't tested loop points yet, so let's see what it sounds like first. Because this helps us to also find the key that we're in. If your male tenor group gets up to sing and they haven't, uh, they have different vocals, sometimes you gotta work with what you have. Trouble in my way. Come on, boys. Let's let's hear it. Oh, that's not good. Doing it live as they say. Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I Ten got is. to cry sometimes. I got to cry sometimes. Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I got to cry sometimes. I got to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. But that's alright. That's alright. I know that Jesus. Jesus, He will fix it after a while. Way. Trouble in my way. I got to cry sometimes. I got to cry sometimes. Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I got to cry sometimes. I got to cry sometimes. One. I lay awake at the night. One. I lay awake at night. But that's alright. Four. That's alright. To the one. I know that Jesus. Jesus. To the he four. Will fix after a while, five, after one while. more time. Trouble in my way, trouble in my way. I got to cry sometimes. Jazz. I got to cry sometimes. Trouble in my way, trouble in my way. I got to cry sometimes. I got to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. That's alright. That's alright. I know that Jesus, Jesus, He will fix it after a while. After a while. So we're gonna have uh, some fun with this series. I'll get a um, congregational song. Um, I have so many that I can actually pick from. As you can see, we have. Do a little bit of grifting. We have uh, books here that you see flashing. Let me point to it. There we go. That 
give you a, a for the brand new musician uh, what I've been uh, showing you or demonstrating to you basic hymnal chords it says 20 I believe on the book there's actually 23 that I put in there and I put the um, the actual um, the actual standard hymns so that you can practice melody so you can practice the basic chords that you saw me using and I put advanced chord charts where you can now substitute where if it's a C chord you can substitute a C7 chord or C minor chord and see how does it sound against a basic melody of a known song. You, you, you would be surprised that how many chords that you can apply, as you saw me doing right there with that trouble in my way, to a song to be able to bring out the sound. Yes, it's a little bit off. That's purposely done it. I wanted to sound like a bunch of men coming up to sing. They're never in time. And you have to gauge and does that part of what's coming up rhythm, trying to find the rhythm of whoever you have in front of you. So we're going to bring this to a close. Sam Tolbert, Sound of Joy Music Services. Again, if you like these videos, consider subscribing to us. If you are not subscribed yet, give us that thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and as always, leave a comment. See you on our next part of the series, 10 Things Every Church Pianist Should Practice. Take care.